I'm Vinny Politan. Great to have you with us tonight here on Closing Arguments. And I want to begin with the latest in the investigation into the now confirmed death of Gabby Petito. Take a look. 22 years old. She went on a trip. Should have been an adventure of a lifetime. You know, 22 years old, driving around with your boyfriend, your fiancé, and, and, and just experiencing life and all the amazing things to see in, in, in our amazing country. And posting and sharing with the world on social media should have been amazing. Um, but now we've gotten this tweet from the FBI out of Denver. The Teton County Coroner, Dr. Brent Blue, has confirmed that the remains are those of Gabriel Venora Petito. Date of birth, March 19th, 1999. Coroner Blue's initial determination for the manner of death, and this is huge. This is big news tonight. Homicide. The cause of death remains pending final autopsy results. Manner of death, homicide. How do we define homicide? Death at the hands of another. It's not an accident. It is not suicide. It is not natural causes. This is now a homicide investigation. And who exactly still remains as a person of interest in whatever happened to Gabby Petito? That is her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. Take a look. Here he is. Take a look at his picture. I want you to see his picture tonight. You know why? Because he is still on the lam. Nobody knows where he is. Apparently his parents don't know. They told police. And, and, and now you've got a massive manhunt taking place. Law enforcement and every web sleuth on social media looking through videos and, and cameras trying to track down this man, Brian Laundry. Meanwhile, law enforcement down in Florida... Uh, went back to the Carlton Reserves and started searching there again. Um, they stopped for a day, but are back at work there. So, we've got a lot to cover tonight. Let's first bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, who joins us tonight. Um, Chanley, let's start first with that search, right? Uh, there was the big FBI raid and search of the laundry home. What have we learned there, and what's the latest that we're learning uh, from the family tonight? Well, first of all, the authorities aren't releasing exactly what they gleaned from an all-day search of Brian Laundrie's family home there in Northport, Florida. And you can see in the video the authorities, the FBI, taking box after box out of the house, putting it in the evidence vans for processing. Not sure what they found, but it seemed like a lot. Now, when I'm going through the evidence, there was a particular part of a search warrant that really stood out to me. This was signed by Northport Police Department. It's for the search warrant for the contents of an external hard drive that was found in Gabby Petito's white van. That van that her fiance Brian drove to that house right there without Gabby on September 1st and left that. The authority sees that, but there's something particular about this search warrant. In paragraph five, it says that Gabby's mother became concerned about a text on August 27th. It says the subject's mother received an odd text. The text message read, quote, can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls, quote, end quote. The reference to Stan Vinny referring to Gabby's grandfather, but per her mother, she would never call her grandfather Stan in a text message. So this certainly alarmed Gabby's mother. And that's August 27th. That's one of the last messages that Gabby's mother would hear from her in what her family attorney has told the media, an alarming string of texts that she doesn't believe quite that Gabby may have sent. So really building a timeline for authorities about maybe around the time that Gabby would have passed away. That date is crucial in this timeline, August 27th. It's not just that message. That was also the date of that YouTube video that most people believe led investigators to the remains of Gabby Petito, and that was the white van on the side of the road on the 27th of August. So as investigators are putting that together, you put this odd tweet, 
You've got the van on the side of the road near the area where the body is found, starting to put these pieces together. Um, how about Gabby's family? This has to be, I mean, I know it's devastating because I, I listened to them. Uh, I spoke with uh, her, her stepfather, and they're all holding out hope that somehow, some way, she was stranded somewhere. And now, today, you've got this confirmation from the uh, coroner. Uh, what about Gabby's family tonight? Well, of course, they are devastated after the recovery of the remains on Sunday, that grim discovery by authorities after a two day search of the remote campsite there at the Grand Teton National Park. The family of Gabby Petito asked for some privacy so that they could cope and grieve with what happened. After a couple of days not hearing from the family, they did release a statement today, a day that the coroner there in Teton County confirmed that the remains were indeed their daughter Gabby. And in a statement through their attorney, they say that I want to personally thank the press and news media for giving the Petito and Schmidt family time to grieve. We will be making a statement when Gabby is home. I will contact you to arrange the time and location. And you're right, Vinny, because of this family, getting the story of who Gabby was out there, the awareness of her missing. And this is still an ongoing investigation. Even with the release of the FBI confirming the identification of the remains, they're still asking for the public's help. I know you talked about social media presence, those sleuths, armchair detectives out there helping possibly the investigation. They're asking for those with information to send photos, to make their tips to 1-800-CALL-FBI because while Brian Laundry is still missing, uh, he's just a person of interest. He's not a suspect and they just want him for questioning. Chanley Painter, Court TV legal correspondent, thanks so much. Uh, joining us now in Venice, Florida, reporter with our great affiliate WFTS, Judy Salomon uh, joins us. Uh, Julie, great to see you, thanks so much. Uh, what's the latest in the search tonight for Brian Laundry? Well, I can tell you right now, the FBI is leading this investigation. Authorities have been out here throughout the day searching what is known as the Carlton Reserve. It's 25,000 acres of land out here, and it's a very difficult search. There are alligators, there are snakes, but right now uh, the search has concluded for the evening. They said that they have found nothing of any importance right now, uh, but they plan to be back out here again tomorrow. And any difference in, in, in the search today as, as, as compared to prior searches? Did they go to different areas? Was Were there different... Um, uh, tools that have been used? Well, they are essentially searching the same park, but different areas. So when they started over the weekend, they were focusing on the area closest to Brian Laundry's home, the home he has with his parents in Northport. But now they have moved about 30 minutes away from that area and they're searching the area out here. They're using very uh, specific drones that have the capability of really honing in on a specific location to see what's going on there. We also saw a helicopter in the area as well. They're using ATVs and law enforcement pointed out that this park is mostly underwater. 75% of it is underwater, so that makes the search very difficult. Are they looking for him anywhere else? Have they indicated that, hey, okay, we're looking in this park, this is what the parents told us, uh, but are they following leads or, or going in any other areas? I have tried to get information all day long, and right now everything is being filtered to the FBI office out of Denver. At this point, they said any major updates will come from Twitter. We are seeing a lot of misinformation online about where Brian Laundry might be, but at this point, law enforcement has not come out and said that they're searching any other state or any other location besides the park behind me. And, and finally, any word from his parents? Well, that is two people we have not heard from this entire time. Law enforcement says their communication with the parents has really been limited. At this point, um, police are just calling Brian Laundry a person of interest. Police have said the entire time that they wanted to speak with Brian, but when officers went to the home in Northport, uh, they were asked to contact his attorney up in New York. All right, Julie Salomon joining us from Venice, Florida tonight. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Unbelievable developments in all this. Um, we're now at a point where the manner of death is 
homicide. Homicide. Changes everything. Changes everything. I want to bring in a special guest joining us tonight. Uh, criminal defense attorney in Atlanta, Georgia. President, former president of the Georgia Association of Criminal Defense Attorneys. Uh, Lawrence Zimmerman is with us. Lawrence, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, let, you know, a lot of questions. Let me, let me throw these at you, okay? Because this is what people are, are wondering. The parents of Brian Laundrie, um, do they need a lawyer? Or could they be charged with anything? People are saying, should they be charged with obstruction of justice? Why, why didn't they come forward earlier? Why did they remain silent? Um, all of that. What are your thoughts about Laundrie's parents? I mean, if there's evidence that they knew something about their son covering up uh, Petito's disappearance and death, I mean, certainly there could be some charges, but it's hard to, it's hard to imagine what they really actually know just based on what he told them. And I mean, well, I don't know. Well, but, but whatever, it, it's, Lawrence, here, here's the deal, though, right? And, and this is the reality. Whatever he told them was enough for them to get a lawyer. Right? Sure. So he didn't say, like, she went home or we split up and she went back to New York. You don't need a lawyer for that. Of course not. You're talking about the parents. The parents. But the parents got a lawyer, yes. They, whatever, whatever this guy, Brian Laundrie, told his parents when he came back home in Gabby's van without Gabby prompted them to hire an attorney. So um, I, I can't believe he just said that um, oh, uh, yeah, she went back home. No, she had to say something that would, would make them want to hire an attorney. Right, Lawrence? No, I, I, no, I agree with you 100%. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing. I just don't know. I just don't want to speculate what the parents know what they could be charged with. Clearly, Brian Laundrie seems to be involved in her disappearance. No doubt about that. Maybe they hired a lawyer to run interference for Brian and they may not know a lot, but they just knew he, you know, he was up to something, and maybe he wouldn't reveal it, and they got concerned. It's hard to say. That's that's all. You know, it's charged with obstruction. What are they obstructing about? That they knew where Gabby's buried. I mean, did Brian tell them that? I mean, it's. I just don't know what the obstruction would be yet. That's all. Right. I, I just want to make it clear that they knew. I, I mean, from my perspective, using common sense, which I try to rely upon a lot, in, in, you know, not only here but in my life, is that you're hiring an attorney for a reason. All right, Lawrence, we've got some uh, company for you tonight. Uh, joining us in Seattle, Washington, trial attorney Ann Bremner, and in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, former prosecutor, former assistant state attorney, counsel for Ben Crump Law, and trial attorney Sue Ann Robinson. Great to see everyone. All right, um, uh, Sue Ann, uh, okay. So how about the fact that Brian comes home, no Gabby, and whatever he tells his parents, everyone's wondering, what did he tell them? He had to tell them something because they hired a lawyer. Absolutely. I mean, really, what he told the parents is so critical to the investigation. And it's important to note there really isn't a parent privilege. So the, they can't be questioned on what he said at this point, especially being that he's on the lam. I think if you're, you know, I'm a parent, if my child comes home and tells me something that's so disturbing that I contact the police, there's, I mean, a lawyer, a defense attorney, then there's definitely an issue there. There's no way that he came home and said, hey, you know, she just walked away. I don't know where she is. And they contacted a lawyer. There had to be something during the course of that conversation that made the parents believe that their son needed the protection of a criminal defense attorney. And Bremner, right now, this thing is playing out the way I think everyone thought it was going to be playing out, mm -hmm. right? The, the coroner right. comes back rules the manner of death homicide. Mm -hmm. um, the person of interest is missing. And right. the, the, the parents went to police on Friday after he allegedly went camping on Tuesday. Tuesday, Thursday. Um, Tuesday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Gives him four days. He could be anywhere. He could be anywhere. I mean, he, might be, he could mm -hmm. be in that reserve. I don't know. Um, but what are your thoughts about the parents? Because everyone keeps asking me, wherever I go, what about the parents? Should the parents be charged? Do the parents have to worry? Uh, do the parents have to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? What's going on here? Well, at first, I love your common sense, Vinny. That's exactly what it is. I mean, obviously, they know that he's involved, and they've delayed, and they're protecting him. And he didn't speak, and they defended that. 
There's no parental uh, privilege. We knew that from the Monica Lewinsky case. Remember that back when the whole issue was whether or not her parents could assert some kind of a privilege in that impeachment trial of uh, President Clinton. Yeah, the parents, you know, it, they call it obstruction of justice. There's a lot of governmental interference crimes out there, whether federal or state. But the bottom line is they did a search warrant that requires probable cause to believe there's a crime committed. If there's probable cause to search a house, there's probable cause to make an arrest. It's the same standard. So I think here they clearly are protecting their son to a criminal degree. Lawrence, you know, this case could have end up in federal court, right? They're in a, if in fact they allege a crime in a national park, it could end up in federal court here. And you and I both know, Lawrence, I think you'll agree with me, that the feds hate going to trial unless they are guaranteed of a victory. They don't like circumstantial cases. They want direct evidence. And I think the only place in this case that you could potentially get direct evidence is from the parents. If Brian said something to the parents, again, if and when hypothetically he's ever charged with anything. But that would be the only place because there's no witness to this. There's no videotape, right? So um, do you think the feds will try to put the squeeze on the parents and threaten them with charges in order to make them talk? Again, I mean, threaten them with charges. I mean, I, Vinny, I mean, quite, you know, I don't just come on your show and presume guilt, but I think it's pretty clear Brian Laundrie's involved. I mean, he went away with his fiance, came back without her, and uh, has no explanation, and she's dead. Pretty, uh, pretty easy to me to prove guilt there. I mean, it makes zero sense. They had a domestic dispute a couple days beforehand. It's on video with the police. So, I mean, will the feds try to squeeze, squeeze people? Sure, they try to squeeze people all the time. I don't know what Brian told his, the parents that would make it obstruction that they'd be forced to to tell the police what he told them. That's the only reason I'm just reluctant to say that there's some kind of obstruction uh, charge for the parents. All right. I've got 40 more minutes to work on uh, Lawrence tonight. <laughs> so we're just, just getting started here, folks. 